Ba bum 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 bum. Weather. Ba bum 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 bum. You're a guy or a... in a cape. God, I don't remember these words. A Roku sneaky. Join me and Roger as we attempt to entertain the geeky. So guys, we've got a hell of a topic for you right uh, now. Yeah, he just like five seconds ago. I dropped a bomb. And my head, it's like you remember that first time you orgasm. Yeah. How how you're 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 just so you're in space. Yeah, that's where I'm at right now. Like I am post first orgasm in space with my brain waves, man. <laughs> you fucking blew me away with this question. And it's it, it's a simple question, um, but it, it's one that needs an answer. Why is it cool to be a nerd now? Yeah, and this infuriates me. It does, but like I, I so I remember being in high school, and this was. You know, I went to, I started high school in uh, 2004. You started after I graduated. That's fine. Um, oh, two? Which is fine. Uh, but, oh, four, yeah, oh, no, oh, four, no, five, oh, five, four. oh, six. Well, yeah. When did you graduate? 2008, so I started oh, four. Yeah, you started oh, four. Um, I was God, just you're sure. so young. Yeah. Uh, so, back then, even, it was still not okay to be a nerd in high school. You know, <sighs> It was getting better for your age. Like, I grew up when it was it was still bad, bad. It, uh, I, like, went, I went to a small school for okay. my first two years of high school. Like, yeah, I can see that. Like, And they they were not... It was... No, 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 no. <laughs> you didn't I mean, do that. Uh, think, thinking about it, though, it's like... So, it definitely has changed. And I think there's a lot of... Re- like, we can discuss why that 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 has changed why nerd has become more mainstream main culture and i it's, think it's nerd chic it, well yeah you got toonami um you've got the marvel cinematic universe you've got you know but what like there had to have been something that triggered the switch because it went from unacceptable to the standard well yeah and and, and the thing is it's not just comics now like everything all of it. like like gaming and and video video games is a big reason for it but video games board games role playing games all of it has become acceptable and encouraged. Um, you know, maybe we can look back at ESPN when they did Magic the Gathering on TV. Oh, my God, years ago. Yeah, 90, 95, 96, 97, you know, making that a little bit more main stage. Um, obviously, the movies didn't hurt. No, not at all. Um, and I, I mean, mean, here's the thing. Even with the original Spider-Man movies, like 2002, all yeah. that, people were going to see those. Well, X-Men. X-Men, The yeah. X-Men movies. Um so it's not that I don't think that that it, it got to where being nerd it wasn't an overnight thing. So hold on. Speaking of the X Men and Spider Man movies, you know Hugh Jackman's Wolverine was supposed to make an appearance in the first Spider Man movie, but his suit did not arrive in New York in time, so he didn't do the cameo. No. Yes. Well, you know Thomas Jane's in Spider Man too. Yes. So yeah, I uh, yeah I don't know why. I think I think the culture just changed. It w- it was a total shift though. Like it was like within five years. Well, well, just not just look at kids nowadays versus kids when we were kids. I mean, they're they're obviously more. It's more everybody's more inclusive. I yeah. mean, clicks aren't as big as they were. I mean, they they definitely exist, but, but I mean, yeah, it's but, not like it was. No, it, it's. So I don't. I think that has a lot to do with it. Um. The more the more mainstream the nerds became, the better. You know, you know, a movie that summed it up really well though was uh, 22, 21st, 20, 21, twenty one Jump Street. Street. Yeah, because um, they get back to high school and it's cool to be a nerd, and they're like, "What the, the fuck? fuck?" Yeah, 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 and that's how it is now. It is. Um, it, but it's it's weird. Is like you know, people my age, thirty three now. God damn, I'm getting old. It's still you know, nerd is still nerd, and I'm very fortunate to know a lot of nerds and a lot of non nerds. And you don't talk non nerd shit with you don't talk nerd shit with non nerds. That's just the rule. You know what's funny is I do, like I've got so the the people that I grew up with and I'm very close to, like they know how I am. And right. A lot of them, th- there's bits and pieces of what I like that they can get into, and it's I mean you know somebody for twenty years and that's what you get. Yeah. Um, yeah. But then there's the other people that are like, they'll start talking to you and they'll be like, so did you go to watch that new Spider-Man movie? To like almost antagonistic because they grew up in the old school where it wasn't cool to be a nerd. And I'm like, yeah. Yeah, and it was bad. And, well, <laughs> or whatever, because like one of them, uh, when I first started my current 9 to 5, one of the guys that I work with was like, so you watched Age of Ultron? I was like, yeah, it was cool. And he's like, that movie was badass, man. And I'm like, 
No, I'm it like, wasn't. I'm like, dude, you should have got in on this a long time well, ago. And I, I think what we're seeing, is, and we are very, we are very bad about this. Me, I myself am the worst. Is when you when you when you get those purds, like your first instinct's like, motherfucker, just go away. You don't know shit. I had a guy do it to me at a bar, and it pissed me off. Yeah, but and it should piss you off, and it should also piss you off that you're doing this. That like it pisses me off that I have that attitude because at the end of the day, our hobby, our love, our passion is growing. Yeah, and for better or for worse, that just means that people are going to be reading these comics for a very long time. People are going to enjoy the, the characters. Um, and we, we, I think our issue is we are old school. We are. And now that we've seen the, the climate shift to where it's no longer smelly guys in the basement drinking Mountain Dews and eating Cheetos to being acceptable, we've also seen our hobby and our passion change to accommodate that. Yeah. And Marvel is the biggest... They're the catalyst. Yeah. The, the fact that they've changed their entire comic universe to start matching the cinematic universe Ugh. really pisses us off. It should. Because... We grew up in an age where Gwen Stacy died this way. Mary Jane and Peter Parker are married. Fucking Nick Nick Fury has hair. Um, it's more than he has hair. It's, he changed yeah. races. He, um, you know, Captain America is the red, white, and blue through and through. And now that they've changed to make it like the movies. And you know where it started? Marvel started it with the fucking new X-Men. They did. After X-Men came out, they're like, oh, the black leather looked cool. Let's go ahead and make... Get, get, get fucked, Marvel. Get that. Sorry. Get fucked. Yellow spandex is where it was at. I mean, here's the thing. So with superheroes, you had to be distinguishable. Yeah. Being in black leather doesn't necessarily make you distinguishable. No, it makes you like the fucking Lost Boys. Oh, God, it does. <laughs> it does. And I, But on the flip side, there are still things that nerds hold true. Like, the fact is, I can tell you how to calculate that go. I can play, I can, you throw down a D&D game, any edition, I'm going to play it. Yeah. You throw down Vampire the Masquerade, we'll rock it out. You throw down Vampire the Requiem, I'm going to call you a purd until you get your little no good goth ass away from me. That's just the way it is. We have our lines now. We do. We know that that Wolverine can't die, and we know that Deadpool's a bad guy. That's just the way it is. He's an anti-hero. Yeah, he's one of the best. <laughs> that doesn't mean bad oh. guy. Anti-hero is not bad. Real guy. quickly, real quickly. Someone posted something on Facebook. I, I I want your thoughts on. Yeah. So imagine in the in the, close your eyes and imagine the new in the new Spider-Man movie. Okay. Peter Parker has a day off. He sees that there's a Comic Con type convention going on in New York City. So he goes. So he goes as cosplaying as Spider-Man. Enters a Spider-Man costume contest and loses. And loses to Deadpool. That would be hysterical. Right. Like Deadpool sitting there in a very crappy Spider-Man costume. It's really just a Deadpool outfit with a with like I picture a paper bag with a Spider-Man picture on it, and he wins. And you just see Peter Parker looking at Wade all pissed off. That'd be great. Ah, but like okay, so this is this is where the whole Spider-Man thing would get weird because Wade in the cinematic universe right now is in his late thirties. Yeah. Peter Parker is a teenager. Now Wade has this like. Thing for Spider-Man. This huge man crush for yeah. Spider-Man in the so, comics. And, and it's because in the comics, Spider-Man's almost 30 years old. Right. Um, if not a little older. He's, he's 29. Is he? That's his exact age, yeah. Uh, so he's 29. So... Yeah, it doesn't work in the cinematic universe. It but, does not work with a 16-year-old. Okay, so just imagine Tobey Maguire doing... Like Spider-Man 4. The Sam Raimi Spider-Man 4. Okay. Okay. So I mean, even with Andrew Garfield, because he was 30 years man, old fuck playing, Andrew Garfield. playing a teenager... That guy, oh my god, Andrew Garfield with this. That's it. That's it. Right there. That's the problem with with, with, with nerds being acceptable now is is you can't do you can't do one of the best things about Peter Parker, which was Peter Parker was the outcast. Yeah. He was that nerdy science kid that no one talked to. But now being nerdy in science is cool. Like you see the Spider Man movies, you see Andrew Garfield as Spider Man. He's not the kid you wanted to pick on and punch and take his lunch money. He's the fucking kid you wanted to hang out with. Yeah. Riding a skateboard. Yeah. And... That, that, there's the issue. That's one of the issues. God, now I'm all fidgety. I see that. Uh, and Star Trek is now officially cool again. Fuck you, J.J. Abrams. And Star Wars is Star Wars. It started with the Transformers movies. No, it started before the Transformers movies. No, it didn't. X-Men, X-Men was pre-Transformers. Spider-Man was pre-Transformers. Yeah, but that's not when it was okay. Do you know where it really started? It wasn't full-blown okay yet. Do you know when it started? When? X-Men 90s cartoon. 
because that was a worldwide phenomenon. And that just that it just was, went. But when you're a kid, it's okay to like superheroes. But it's, here's the thing: it's when you graduate into middle school, <laughs> junior high, whatever you but call it. By the time by the time that happened, after after that, I mean we we were fortunate enough to live post Dark Knight. Yeah, it, like like yes, we were. I was I was alive when when Dark Knight was released. Yeah, in, in comic form. I was not reading comics at that time. I was like four, but. We live in a, we lived in that post Dark Knight world, so we've seen gra- like we lived post graphic novels growing up, becoming more adult friendly. So we we hit it with the '90s cartoon. We go to teenage years. We're all about blood, guts, and, and awesomeness. So there's Spawn, and, and the Turtles reboot, and Witchblade, and 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 Preacher, and Punisher, and all these violent comics. And Wolverine. Then we, Wolverine. Wolverine was brutal. Yeah. So 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 we have these comics. And then that gets us through our adolescence years, and then we realize that there's good shit out there. There's Watchmen. There's The Dark Knight Returns. There's which all came out in the '80s, which is but, insane. You know, yeah. But we're looking back, like yeah. now we're adults, and we're seeing where Preacher goes. We see Sandman. We see these comics, and now there's no reason for us to give that up. X Men started telling more adult stories. Oh yeah. At that time, so there's no reason for us to ever stop walk and walk away from this hobby. Whereas before, you would outgrow the stories that were being told. I mean, in the seventies and the sixties, comic, po- comic books got very grown up very fast. Uh, really, they you, did. Say, like they did because it, you had Nick Fury. Like there were books getting pulled off the shelves because of uh, sexual exploitation. Yeah, and the stuff Comic Con like Authority really screwed everything up. But <sighs> but if you notice, like comic books when you were in the sixties, seventies, fifties, and forties, you would read comic books as a kid because that's what you read. Yeah. But then you would you would outgrow what they were you would outgrow the stories they were telling, and and what happened in the eighties, nineties, and the aughts was I'd say seventies too. Seventies is when it started to happen, uh, man. Seventies it was with the horror comics, and that was still that was still aimed towards kids. It wasn't all horror comics, so you had some, uh, you had some comics back then. You had you had you you did have the death of of Gwen Stacy in the seventies, which which marks the end of innocence in comics. That really did. Like that's when comics were like, you can kill people and keep them dead, and keep them dead, and 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 not just be some one-off side character, but you can actually kill a main character. You killed the hero's girlfriend. Yeah, and and a totally and and not only killed her, it was his fault. Yeah. He killed her, and and that that marked the end of age of age of innocence. But comics before then, like I said, you would just outgrow those stories. You know, it was no longer entertaining. But then, in the 70s, 80s, 90s, odds, comics started going toward... There, there, there were that, stories for you know, adults. That's, that's the thing, though. So even when we were when we were kids, like little kids, and we've got these, you know, uh, Daredevil Born Again, and yeah. all that's like crazy good storylines, uh, you know, fuck, um, the Batman Dark Knight Returns, you've got all that, and like that was already there. Like, we there should have been, like at that point, we should have seen... But I, I, we were the first generation, truly, to be to be to grown up past that. We were we were that first generation. Okay. Um, and and no one picked when you were a little kid. You didn't get picked on for reading X Wing comics. It's when you became a teenager that you got picked on still for reading comics. Yeah. But when you were a kid, it was acceptable because you had the Saturday morning cartoons and you had you had you had all of that. It, it, it's when you when you quit being a kid and you went to a teenager where you're supposed to be worried about cars and girls and football, and you're still reading. What you watched when you were a little kid. Yeah. Uh, th- but the difference was, at that point, they were telling stories for our age. Yeah. And and, and we, we actually, we are the lucky generation to grow up in a time where there was comics for every bit of our age. And even Batman and <laughs> Superman and X-Men, these comics that you can still read for kids, they are still telling stories. That appeal to adults. That appeal to adults. The average comic book age reader, what, is 18 to 23 right now? And before that, before that, I mean, the generation before us, it was fucking eight to thirteen year olds males that were reading comics. Like that was a target yeah, demographic. Now, now, now I think there's more females that read than males. Yeah, the the female market is growing way more than the male market, and 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 it's not because there's strong female characters; it's because they're actually telling good stories now, and everyone can read these stories. It's no longer the pecs and big tits and and superheroes just beating the shit out of each other. But those are all still there. They're all still there, but that's not that's not what. It's all the there basis is. of everything. Right. I mean, yeah. remember back in the day, it was superheroes and fucking romance stories. That's it. Yeah. I mean, look, you now have an Archie that's good. 
Yeah. When was point. the last time Archie was good? 1952. Yeah. Yeah. It's a damn good time to be a nerd. And to answer your question, Chris, why is it good to be a nerd? No, what made it acceptable? Just society changed. I mean, yeah, it's it's good. It's good. Don't get me wrong. We never grow up. It's a bunch of man children running around. Like we take like there's that meme on the internet floating around of, of, the, of this guy, the stereotypical nerd, the fat guy in the dirty white shirt, bad hair, bad, bad fucking... Um, complexion, all that. Complexion, and I can't think of the word, grooming habits, you mm-hmm. know. And he's sitting there at his computer, and there's a bunch of Warhammer figures painted, all the shit's behind him, and people are making fun of him. But beneath it, you see a guy go, why are you making fun of him? Obviously, this guy enjoys something in his life, has the means to support himself, and the monetary expenditures, expenditures to spend money on what he enjoys. Dude's got his shit together. And that's where we're at now. Is is being a nerd kind of means you've got your shit together. Unless you live with your parents. You I, with and your that, parents. That's, that's the stereotypical nerd right there. The guy but that it, lives in mom and dad's basement. It, it, I think that's changed now. I, uh, and as much as I hate to give credence to the show. Yeah. The Big Bang Theory has done a lot for making... For, for, for showing nerds out of the parents' basement. Sure, they're still socially awkward, but let's let, let's let's actually be honest with ourselves for one second here. All nerds are kind of socially awkward when they're out of their element. Oh, yeah. Like, like, like Just like every other human being. You put me in a room with nothing but, like, tens, I'm done. I'm, I can't talk. Blah, blah, blah. You put me in a room of people that fucking know their shit, we'll talk for hours. And that's just the way it is. Yes, we're socially awkward at, in, in certain situations. Yeah, we're different. But... So is everyone else. You take a car guy and you stick him in a fucking fishing expo. He's not. He's not going to know what to talk about. You take a. You, you put us in front of a sports guy. We're, we'll talk about. He hit the ball very far. But you put him in Wizard World. He can't talk shit. Put him in Wizard World. Let's see Do what it, happens. Pussy. Right. Exactly. And and to be honest with you, at the end of the day, you can be a nerd and not read comics because let's. Oh be, yeah. You can be a car nerd. You can be a fishing nerd. You can be a sports nerd. The difference, it's, it's all the same. You're, you're, you're passionate yeah. about your hobby. You're passionate about what you care but about. But our hobby is acceptable now. Our hobby is. Ho- hobbies. Hobbies, yeah. Yeah, because we're, we're there. that's another thing. God, I'm just tripping all over myself We're, we're pretty deep in it. Um, well, that and, and a lot of people, there are people who just read comics. Yep. And there are people who just play board games. Yep. And there are people who just play Magic. But those people are actually getting rarer and rarer. Now it's kind of, you do everything. Yeah. You read comics. You play Magic. You play Yu-Gi-Oh. You play Cards Against Humanity. You do it all. And you, you figure out what you love. And you and you just go and you do it. And honestly, I can't think of a better life. On that note, go to entertainthegeeky.com. Follow us on all of our social media. Thank you for tuning in, guys. If you haven't already... Go to BeastEscapeRoom.com. Enter that promo code GEEKY. Get 20% off your one-hour Beast Escape Room experience. Make sure you say hi to Ronnie Cobb while you're out there. As always, stay geeky.